Hello, and welcome to another edition of CUDA Casts. In today's video, we're going to use the CUDA toolkit we installed in episode 1 to write our first CUDA program using the C programming language. For my integrated development environment, I'll be using Microsoft's Visual Studio with the Insight plugin. This plugin is installed when you install the CUDA toolkit on a system which contains Visual Studio. The program we're going to be accelerating onto the GPU is a simple vector add example. Now the first step to create a CUDA project in Visual Studio. You do this by clicking on New Project. And then on the NVIDIA menu option, we make sure CUDA is selected. In this case, I have the CUDA 5.0 runtime installed. I'm going to give this a name of Vector Add and click OK. By default, there will be a kernel.cu file created for you by the wizard, and this has some sample CUDA code which you can look through. But for this video, we won't be using this code. I'm going to paste in the CPU only code. This is a fairly simple function. It's vector add simply does a for loop going from i0 to n minus 1. It calculates the ith element of c by adding the ith element of a plus the ith element of b. So that's the vector add function in a main. We have our three host side pointers. We uh, allocate the space using malloc. We then initialize the data. We call our function. We're going to print out the first 10 elements so we can check our work and make sure we're getting the right result. And then we free our uh, memory that we've allocated. So I'm going to compile this. Once that's done compiling, I'm going to run it. And as expected, we get 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So now let's move this function to execute on the GPU. There are three steps we're going to have to take in order to make this happen. The first is to parallelize the vector add function. The second is to allocate memory on the GPU and move our data over for the function to execute on. And then finally, we need to modify our vector add function call in order to enable it to launch on the GPU. So the first step is to parallelize this vector add function. And we start this by adding the underscore underscore global underscore underscore keyword to the function. And what this does is it tells the compiler that this function is going to be executed on the GPU and is callable from the host. So this is now a function that's going to be run in parallel by many threads. And so we need a way for each thread to identify itself. So there's a read-only variable defined for you called threadindex.x. So by doing this, we're going to have one thread operate on one element or C. So we no longer need this for loop. However, we still need this if check in here to make sure if we have more threads than we have data, we're not processing data that we don't have available in our overriding memory. So that's it. We've now parallelized this vector add function, enabled it to run on the GPU. So now our next step is to allocate memory on the GPU. And at this point, it's important to realize that we are working with two memory spaces. There's the CPU memory and the GPU memory. So we first, we need to allocate memory on the GPU. We then need to copy the data to the GPU. We'll then launch our vector add kernel, and we'll calculate our values of C. And finally, we'll copy those values of C back to the CPU memory so we can print out the results. So let's see what that actually looks like in the code. So again, we have separate memory spaces, so we need to have separate pointers to the different memory types. Most people indicate this by adding a D underscore in front of their variable to indicate it's a device side pointer. And just like we malloced an allocated space on the host side memory, we need to do the same for the GPU side memory. And we use what's called CUDA malloc, which is very similar to the malloc in CUDA C, except instead of passing back a pointer, it takes an address to your, your pointer, as well as the size and number of bytes you want to allocate. And by doing it this way, the CUDA malloc API can now return an error code if something goes wrong. We'll do this for our three variables. Initializing the data will be the same. And now we need to copy this initialized data to the GPU. And we do this with CUDA memcopy, which is very similar to the memcopy already used in C. We have the destination, the source, the number of bytes, and then a new parameter, which indicates the direction the data is flowing. In this case, we are going to go from the host to the device, which indicates to the compiler where the destination and source pointers are coming from. 
Again, we're going to do this for all three arrays. We're going to skip modifying the vector add function for the moment. And now we need to copy back our results from the device. So we're going to swap the destination and the source. And then we also need to change the direction the data is flowing. So we're now going from device to host. Print out our results, we free our host memory, and because we're good coders, we are going to free our device side memory. All right, so now we've handled the memory side of it. And one last thing we need to do is we need to add a new syntactic element to this vector add function call to specify the launch configuration of this function, of this kernel. We do this by adding the, by indicate this with the triple angle brackets. The first parameter is the number of blocks we have. In this case, for this simple program, we're just going to have one block of threads. And then we specify the number of threads in that block. In this case, we're using the size defined, which is 1,024 threads. And since we are now operating on GPU memory, we need to use our new pointers, our new device pointers. And that's it. We've now executed all three of our steps. We should be able to compile this. And then run it. And we get the same output we did with the CPU code, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So we have now successfully moved our vector add function to execute on the GPU using CUDA C. Now, there are many other CUDA-enabled languages in addition to C. C++, Fortran, and Python are just a few examples. There are also different techniques available for accelerating your code on a GPU versus writing CUDA code directly, as we've done in this example. In a follow-on episode, we'll write our first directive-based accelerated program using the OpenACC compiler from PGI. Thanks for watching this edition of CUDAcasts.